One time in St. Louis, I got my hair cut at this barbershop I had never been to, right? I should have known something was up, because when Buddy finished, he ain't even had me like the little mirror. He just swung the chair around and was like, there you go. So I paid him, tipped him well, and I was on my way. I'm driving to get something to eat. Something said, flip the mirror down and see what you're working with real quick. Buddy had my hairline looking like the San Andreas fuck. Bro, my joint looked like a capital M going into a lowercase M. My hairline looked like a sandwich when you take a bite out of it, fam. So I bust a U, we pull back up at the shop. I'm like, bro, what did you do to my hairline? Straight face, Buddy looked at me and was like, hooked you up. Bro, how you hooked me up and my hairline looked like fabulous chip too? So I'm telling them, dog, I film a morning show every day. Bro, I can't go on there looking like this. Buddy straight was like, Oh man, why you ain't tell me you be on TV like that? I would've hooked you up. Bam! Why wouldn't you just leave with your best foot? Why does my job determine how well you cut my hair? What barber school is out here teaching people to only cut hair good when they got a good job? Come on! Bam. Welcome back to the Mrs. Think Smart Show. Listen, I have one of the greatest of St. Louis is doing it. He's in LA right now. Mr. Robert Tayyip. More, you know him as Tyler, man. He in LA, he doing his thing, y'all know. So, brother. Yeah, man. Man, we at homecoming. Yeah, 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 it's homecoming weekend. Harrison State University, we represent, man. You know, for I'm sure, for sure. Bros, but Harrison State University, homecoming. Man, me and Rob went to school together, man. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. him, he's doing his thing in LA. So, brother, you know, I remember you doing comedy, mm -hmm. but it was on just a joking level when we was here at Harris State. Yeah, for sure, man. Just joking and joining and having fun. Yeah. So how did you actually think in your mind, like, I can take this to another another level? Uh, all I knew was that it was fun. And I was, like you said, I was joking around. I wasn't taking it as seriously as I could have. I definitely wasted time in St. Louis. I could have taken it a lot more seriously. When I got out to L.A. and I saw comics were driving Range Rovers and writers were right, driving around Range Rovers, I was like, oh, they, they really getting money out here. So really that's money. when I started taking it seriously. I started writing more. Sort of revamping jokes, started really spending time uh, developing my craft. And uh, the hardest thing was just moving out there, just saying I'm going to do it and sticking to it, not continue to push it back. I made the decision I'm going to do it. It was scary. I didn't have a lot of money, but I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. And so making that transition was the first big step to like, getting to where I am right now. So from so from doing comedy, you've been doing comedy really all your life. Yeah, 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 right, for the most part. You're right. So... If you had anything to tell somebody who wanted to grow and develop in the co the comedic, uh, I heard Kevin Hart say is a fraternity. Yeah. What would you give them? What type of advice would you give them? Um, typically, I charge for this uh, <laughs> as a seminar because these are these are real jewels, man. Yeah, like no it's, it's like you know, it's kind of like giving up the secrets of your fraternity. You know, right. like you got to make sure somebody is vetted and right. they really but truly be this. The main thing is get on stage. Like, can't nobody help you write your joke better than you. You can get some tags with comics, but your truth has to be your truth. Base every joke in some form of reality. It's cool to like create a joke, but then you gotta try to remember that joke verbatim every time. But when you base it in a little truth, then it's a lot easier just to spit it out because that's something that almost happened or really happened to you. So I always, I always say base it in a little truth and you know, don't be stealing. Don't right. be out there stealing, don't be stealing. Use your own stuff, man. It comes out way better and it resonates with the crowd and the audience way better when it's, it's meaningful for you. They'll understand it. They'll feel it. So. Right. Well, let me, let me ask you a question because I don't want to, I don't, because your time is valuable. I mean, no, I'm good. I'm here for a minute. I got, I got about 10 minutes. <laughs> it's, it's, home, it's homecoming, baby. It's homecoming. So, okay. So, you're transitioning because, you, you know, we were both from St. Louis mm -hmm. and then you made, um, like I did it in going to Dallas. Right. But you did it going to LA. Right. The sacrifice and jumping, yeah, faith, yeah, taking a jump because LA is one thing, but Dallas is another. Mm -hmm. But I know, like, how was that journey? Um, for me, honestly, uh, thankfully, it wasn't that difficult. Uh, I went out there with a plan. I wasn't like I know some comics they go out there and they're pure. They're like, I'm only doing comedy. I'm gonna struggle through it and all of that. I was like, I'm not. Struggling through it. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to do whatever it takes to live the certain lifestyle that I've become accustomed to living. So I wasn't too good or I wasn't the purest at heart where I was like, ah, oh, I'm only doing comedy. I was like, I'm going to do comedy. I'm, I'm going to have a job because I still like to shop and I like to eat groceries. <laughs> right, right. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to right. be like, yo, I starved and lived in my car. Nah, fam, right, I can't. Right. 
I got too many shoes to be living in my car. So right. for me, the transaction transition was pretty oh, seamless. You said too many shoes. To live too in many car. shoes. Yeah, I can't. I, I can't be home. Not clothes, but shoes. Man, buddy. listen, bro. I got too many, bro. I got so, you. So um, yeah, it was. Uh, it was the transition was pretty seamless because I went out there with a plan, and um, I knew what I was and what I wasn't going to accept from the universe. And once you put that out there, I'm really right. big on, on you know. Uh, Spirits and energy. Mm-hmm. Once I put that out to the universe, and I told them this is what I want. Then mm-hmm. it just kind of all came together, and it didn't happen overnight. Definitely didn't happen overnight. Never yeah. ever happens out overnight. Yeah. I've been in LA for ten years, and now people are finally starting to see some of the fruits of my labor. From Insecure to Brooklyn Nine Nine to uh, Grown Folks, uh, a couple commercials and stuff like that. But putting in that time, building those relationships, uh, nurturing those relationships, and you know, just having great work ethic has got me to the point where I'm at right now. That's where it is. That's yeah. where it is. Now, I don't, I don't know if you all heard that, but he said great work ethic. Great. Yeah. Because I, I am doing the same thing that he's doing. Yeah. And great work ethic takes you to the next level. Yeah. Talent will only get you to four. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You could be talented as you want to, but if you keep coming to set late, you're going to get fired. Yep. If you ain't remembering your lines, you're going to get fired. Yep. Uh, if you are rude to the staff and people start to you know talk and murmur about how disrespectful you are, you're going to get fired. So talent can only get you through the do- get you to the door, but to stay inside of that door, to stay inside of that room, you got to have the work ethic and the talent. That's why Kevin is so Kevin Hart is so amazing at what he does because he has the talent and he has an amazing work ethic and mm-hmm. the hustle like a lot of people get to where he is and they, they put it on cruise control, but Kevin still has his foot on the gas and he's mashing 100 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. He's doing things that have never been done, but no comic has ever had a tennis shoe before. Mm-hmm. No comic has ever had a production studio like Kevin Hart has. Mm-hmm. No comic has ever put out their own movie through their own production studio like Kevin has. No comic has ever used their own platform to put other comics on through filming their 30 minute specials to putting them on their own showcase just for laughs, flying them out to Montreal. Mm-hmm. Kevin is doing what you're supposed to do when you have a platform mm. of that status. Mm-hmm. And that work ethic is 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 unparalleled to anything we've ever seen in the comedy business. I'm finna I'm put a I'm finna put a snippet out there because I'm writing my second book. My first book will be out in January. Go check it out. Mm-hmm. But I, I wrote a book about Kevin Hart. Right. I mean, I, I'm sorry, not a book, but a chapter about Kevin Hart. Mm-hmm. And it's called "Put Your Heart in It." Right. And it's spelled with his his yeah. name because I understand his struggle and his journey. Mm-hmm. So put your heart in it because he has a pure heart. No matter mm-hmm. what's going on, right. I know he has a pure heart and he's trying to help people like yeah. that himself as well as general people who's trying to make it. Yeah. So put your heart in it, Kevin Hart. We coming at you. Hey, we love. Love you. We doing the thing. Hey, my boy Tyre. He hey, he said, "Hey, put him on the stage, baby." Hey, listen, put him on the stage. I, I can't say too much, but uh, me and Kevin will be working together soon. Yeah, no you'll, doubt, you'll no see doubt. that. That's coming. Um, I did Heart of the Season. I mean, Heart of the City season three. Okay. Um, and I represented for St. Louis, so that's going to be out at the I think the top of June, January 2019, or top of 2019. And then uh, working on another project too. So okay. everything's falling into place the way it's supposed to, man. Like I don't, I don't talk a whole lot about the stuff. I'd rather make moves than announcements. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes out, people are like, yo, I didn't know. I'm like, hey, man, I was too busy working to make the announcement. And right. that's that's I prefer it that way for me. Like I don't, I don't like to do the braggadocious thing. And some people are like, you know, you got to celebrate your victories. And I do. I celebrate my victory by continuing to work. Like that's. Like I don't, I don't, I don't really put it on cruise control because yeah. that's when you get complacent, and that's when you know start, things start to pass you by. I do take time off, like I'm going to Cabo tomorrow for mm-hmm. a couple of days, and uh, you know celebrate this. This has been an amazing year for me. Yeah. But then I literally come back on Wednesday. I fly out Thursday mm-hmm. for another show for that weekend. So yeah. um, I just got to work, man. Like, well, are you able-bodied and able-minded? Work as hard as you can, and then enjoy your life. You yes, know, so. yes. I, I mean, I believe that. I believe in it. Man, listen, me and this man went to school together. For sure. I saw him at his beginnings. Mm-hmm. And it's lovely to see him grow and de- and be divine yeah, in man. what his gift has, has, has emerged to. It's amazing. Yeah, bro. man. I mean, you know, it's the same thing with Joe, man. Um, even with this vlog series, you know, like I was like, ah, Joe, I don't know if I'm gonna have time. Yeah. But Joe was very adamant. He was like, man, we can make time. We can do whatever. <laughs> we you can know? make time. And yeah. anybody that displays that type of uh, work ethic and that type of hustle about themselves, like we're shooting it in somebody's dorm room right yeah, now. Right I mean, now. I'm on. It's this, the this couch, grind season. This couch has probably had some naked ass on it. And here I am. I know some ass. I sit on my couch with ass cheeks, so I know ass cheeks. 
have been on this couch, and now I'm on somebody's ass cheek couch, and we're doing this vlog. We'll but the, the hustle is that's how important it is to them. When something's that important to you, you will find a way to do it. And if you have something like that in your life, do it. Because my work don't feel like work. My work feels like I'm doing what I love to do. Yeah. And that's the best thing that you could ever live in life. It's yeah. living a, a, a dream that involves your life. Not living life, but living a, a, a dream that involves your life. Because it's, it's magnificent to wake up every day and do what you love. That's what's so, up, man. Yeah. We're going to take a break real quick. And then we're going to come back with the, the with the final words of Tahir yeah, man. Moore. <laughs> wonder how long before damn am i hot already did the cough activate the hot this don't see oh, my throat ah this don't feel safe my chest is burning i think my lungs was allergic to that strand of weed damn did i just go deaf no i can't hear everything nigga i'm spider-man go web slinger go web slinger okay i am not spider-man i am tripping balls oh all right, just play it cool, play it cool, play it. Whoa, where did these nice-ass hands come from? Are these my hands? Oh, hello, hello ladies. How y'all doing? <laughs> did y'all see Tupac over there? Hey, bro. Did you hands all right? I could have sworn that was Tupac. But anyway, girl, your face is soft. This smell clean as hell. Nah. You all like fucked it. Man, this is Dr. Sean, A plus award man, Dr. Saul the Hit Man. I'm here with Joe Size, man, Mr. Think Smart on Think Smart TV, man. Check my boy out, go follow him, man. Peace out. My man Tyre. Yeah. Listen, if you don't know him, he's from St. Louis. Robert Moore doing his big <laughs> things, man. He's been in movies, he's yeah. been in TV shows, he's been all around. Listen, and we here, yeah. St. Louis, Missouri, Harrison State University, homecoming. Yeah. We both graduates. You both did big things and you know what we just got honored yesterday yeah we did we did top 40 under 40 man it was a it was a very prestigious uh honor and award and i was very humble to receive that and be in such great company as mr think smart and a lot of other people a lot of alumni from harris though it's just amazing to see i want to give a big shout out to dr Dwayne warmack uh the new president of harris state university because i really feel like he has revived uh, Harris Stowe, and that's not to slight Dr. Givens in any way, form, or fashion, but, mm -hmm. you know, to reach this new youth, you have to bring new ideas, you have to, you know, freshen the old ideas, and you have to rejuvenate life, and I feel like he's done an amazing job, only to be here two years? Uh, actually, three. Three years. three years. I mean, in three years, I mean, to have the freshman intake up to 600 from, I think it was normally 700. Like 700 yeah. from normally like 300. Um, it's an amazing thing. So every time they come out to LA and they're doing the, the college orientation, mm -hmm. the college tour, I always volunteer my time because your education is very good. And I'm not saying that college is for everybody. I just yeah. say that the college experience has tremendously affected my life for the better. I've made lifelong friends here, I've met Mr. Think Smart, and yeah. various networks that I'm able to reach out when I might be in a bind or just need some help or need mm -hmm. some advice from my college life. So I'm very thankful for my HBCU. You know yeah, I mean? HBCU. Yeah, absolutely, my Historical HBCU. Black College. Mm -hmm. We did that right here. Mm -hmm. And we grow, We and we've expanded so yeah. much. Yeah, really. When, when, I first, when I first started, Harris Stowe was uh, a college one, and then two was commuter school. It had no dorms. Yeah. And in the time that I was here, they uh, acquired one set of dorms. Now they have two sets of dorms, and they have a quad area, and yeah. step shows. So much has changed that it's beneficial for kids in St. Louis. And being the only HBCU in St. Louis, I think it's very beneficial for them to experience this life experience. This might be the first chance they've ever lived outside of their house, you know, with no parents. And even though they're close by, if they're from the city, it's still a great learning experience to uh, learn to budget, to learn to be resourceful with mm -hmm. your food and, and, and how to get said food. So I think Harris O is on a way to do even better things in the future. They are, man. Yeah. They are. And I'm, I'm grateful for them. I actually have to speak later on this week at, at, this, at our alma mater. Yeah. But it's all good. But that's 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 neither here nor there. It's about Ty Year. Listen, yeah. he's doing great things, man. Check him out. Let him know your handles. Okay. Um, on everything it is to hear more, that's T-A-H-I-R-M-O-O-R-E. Um, that's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. My website is tohearmore.com. On Facebook, my friends is maxed out. So find the to hear more that's my fan page because my personal page is maxed out and i post the same content and flyers on both pages and one just comes from instagram the other one i post directly to facebook but 
find the to hear more on Facebook because the personal page is maxed out. No, I really don't even be on there. I just post the videos for y'all, man. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't really got no time to be all on people's pages. Just yeah, going it. back and forth. So, you know, but I appreciate y'all reaching out, man. Definitely reach out. And tours coming up next year. Uh, Real Comedians, a social media tour, part two. Uh, we got 78 dates this year, three international. So if you're international, you're seeing this. We're going to be in London. We're going to do Amsterdam. We're going to do... I think uh, uh, Westchester uh, and a couple other places. So make sure you check that out too. And that'll be on my website as well. And Kev on stage website and TonyBakerComedy.com. So yeah, man, we're just out here trying to work. You trying do, to grind, man. You do your thing. Bro. Hey, man, God bless him. Man, he, he is. He is. <laughs> and I'm going to say this real quick before we get out of here. Yeah. Listen, uh, it was, let's see, was it, we in 2018. 2018. 14, 2014, I brought this man when I was still at, uh, an employee of Harrison yeah. University. I brought him here. He rocked the house. And you look four years later. Yeah. He's on TV. Yeah. He's, he's on sitcoms and movies and all of this stuff. Like, you can do it. Yeah, for sure. You can do it, man. It will not be easy. I mean, it, everybody has their walk of life. And some yeah. people it's harder for others. Some people get in their own way. But you got to visualize what you want. It's not enough yeah. to say... I don't want to be rich and famous. How do you want to do it? You got to visualize the office that you want to work in mm -hmm. down to what color you want the floor, what color your desk is. Mm -hmm. Visualize everything that you want. Be specific with your blessings and your wants because if you just be like, I, I want to be famous, you can mess around and be famous for killing somebody. Like, that ain't what yeah, you want. That's how you know what I'm saying? So be specific with what you want from the universe. Be, be specific with your prayers and your intentions and your motives and watch it come to fruition. Listen. Um, the law, the law of attraction. Yeah, is real, very real. It it's very real. Is. Yeah. And you know me, Mister Think Smart. How I'm pushing it when I think about about transitioning your thoughts and your mind. Mm -hmm. All right. So we salute yeah. the divinity in you. Yeah. And I'm here with Robert to hear more Boom. on the Mister Think Smart show. So subscribe, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. and share. share. Share with a friend, man. They might find something there. Yeah, check my boy out hey. on all his social media platforms. And, hey, we doing it right here in St. Louis. Yeah. We, we back home. Back home. He, he in L.A., I'm yeah. in Dallas. But we back home <laughs> for homecoming. HBCU yeah. status, we doing our thing. Thank you for watching. Mr. Thanks, Marshall. You think it's a game? Okay. 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 You What's must up think there, it's baby? a game, huh? What's up? What's up? No, 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 no. What's up? What? <laughs> so you now you talking all that. Come on, you? let's go. Huh? Let's go. Get him up. <laughs> See, that's what the white man wants us to do. Fight each other when we should be fighting the power. Man, screw all that. Put him. <laughs> brother, brother, brother. You are so lost. Oh, baby, wanna holler the way that